Hi everyone and welcome to another Langmuir Systems Fusion 360 tutorial video. In the last video we took our first look at the Fusion 360 CAM workspace. In this video we'll cover adding your plasma cutter as a tool to Fusion 360's CAM tool library. Before you get started make sure you're in the manufacturing workspace and the fabrication submenu. Now from the manage dropdown select tool library. When the CAM tool library menu appears, make sure that both local and library are checked and that library is highlighted. Notice that you will be unable to add a tool if the library option is not highlighted. Hover over the icons in the corner. Select the one that says water jet, laser, and plasma cutting. Starting in the general tab, enter the make and model of your plasma cutter under description. This will help you identify it later. Other general information is optional. Under the Cutter tab, we'll change the type to Plasma Cutter. Kerf width is the diameter of material that is removed during the plasma cutting process. Different plasma cutter torches and nozzles will have different exact kerf widths to compensate for in order to have an accurate final part. This value is usually between 55 thousandths of an inch and 6 hundredths of an inch, so that's what we'll set here. Your plasma cutter manual might have a different value, and if so, use that instead. Since the Crossfire is a two-axis machine without z-axis movement, we can avoid tip-ups with an accurate nozzle clearance diameter in conjunction with the Keep Nozzle Down feature that we'll use later. For our cutter, the nozzle diameter is conservatively about one inch, but this may differ for you. If you're using the Crossfire Pro, also set this value to one inch. We'll cover z-axis control later. Lastly, double check that your plasma cutter units of measurement are set appropriately. You can safely ignore the holder, feeds and speeds, and post processor tabs for now as they either don't apply to the crossfire or will be set in other menus later. Click the OK button and you're done. Thanks for watching this video, and the next we'll cover creating a setup in the CAM environment. Thanks for watching.